Hey guys, it's Rainad back with another update video of The Bazaar. Today, I want to introduce you to Greg, our senior designer. Hi, I'm Gregory Marks, and I've recently joined the Tempo team, mainly working on characters and card mechanics. Today, we're going to tell you about Stell and her first mechanics pass. So Stell is an aeronaut. Right, she's a pilot and a mechanic, and so she has a bunch of vehicles like hot air balloons and aircraft. And then her core mechanic, our first pass at it, is an altitude mechanic. So she's flying and we want you to feel like she's going up or down as she flies through battle. But the first most obvious thing to do is like, yeah, she builds up altitude and then she spends it like a resource to do stuff. But I was concerned she'd feel too much like a wizard in a pilot's costume. Well, still, I wanted to create more than one way to build out her board and more than one way to succeed. And so I want her altitude to work where you can have a build that goes up in altitude and tries to, to stay high, and a build that drops down and tries to fly low, and then also a build where she's going up and down across the middle a lot, depending on which cards you draft for her. You gravitate towards one style or another, depending on how you like to play it. So we'll have some mechanics in the first draft that give her altitude, some that take away altitude, some that spend altitude, or check her altitude and give you different results based on where it is. So if altitude is about going up and down, to visualize that, we thought maybe her cards would float off the panel and then go back down when she loses altitude. And so they might be going up and down, and as you're gaining a lot, they'll sort of be high up. But we have not prototyped that yet. Once we prototype it, we'll see if it's too distracting or really exciting. Uh, that's why it's really good to have time to build a mechanic and even build a prototype of how it's going to look before you get to the final stage. So Stell, as a character, she's a top-down type of character. In a top-down design, you have the idea and the theme for the character first, and then you build the mechanics out from that theme. Some characters are bottom-up where you have a cool mechanic and you're like, oh, I know what could use this mechanic. It's a sea monster mechanic, and then you build it that way. But for Stella, she was an aeronaut first. And so you think of a bunch of different mechanics that an aeronaut could have. She could go in a more mechanic direction where she's more of a mechanic uh, than a pilot, and therefore she'd have a repairing attribute. She might have a bunch of cards that come in broken and she repairs them or something like that. But uh, our first draft is to go for a flying theme. And so she's going to have a, an up and down mechanic. So that's the thing we thought of. It's like, oh, altitude, that's the thing that pilots care about. And it sounds like a thing that could be used as a number in a game. When each character has their own mechanic, every time you play them, you will think about their strategy differently, and that helps you remember that character and it helps you really feel like you're playing that character rather than just playing any character in the game. In a game like The Bazaar, where there's a large variety of items and there's a lot of collecting and choosing between items, the design really needs a lot of quality in those items. And the more time you have, the more items you can throw away. The more designs you can come up with that are great that are just not as good as the designs you're keeping. So in making a game like this, I like to stand on top of a giant mountain of old designs to reach like the pinnacle of the best stuff in the game. And so the more time you have, the more time you have to do that. The more time you can generate a bunch of ideas and pick the best ones. The process of making games is one that includes a lot of iteration. You make a game, you play it, you analyze the results of how that went, and then you go back to design and design again. And the more times you can complete that loop, the better your game is going to be. And that iteration is a big part of making games. And it's one of the reasons that games are often not finished on time or don't make their schedules as well or have to fight a lot between the number of features they have and when they make their date and the quality of those features. Because games, unlike say banking software, the fun is what you're looking for and you can't know that completely from the start. You have to make it and play it and make it again and play it again and make it again and play it again. The more time you have, the more iterations you can do. You can't be afraid to throw away things in making games. Code, art, design. You have to love everything and throw it away when you don't need it and when it doesn't fit. You can have a great, awesome thing, be it a piece of art, a mechanical design, but it just doesn't go in this game. It doesn't have a place in this game. It doesn't fit in this game. And you have to be willing to let that piece go and design the piece or program or draw the piece that does fit with this game. Rules can come in two types. There can be rules for how I approach design, but also rules for design within this game. And in terms of rules for the game, it's really important to establish the parameters, the walls like that you want to design within for a game, for a character, for a system. It does two things. It helps you create new things, often constraints that give me inspiration, that give me a place to start or know what I can and can't do. But also within a game, you often need rules for, well, look, this character, they want to have a certain amount of their cards do this mechanic or else you won't feel like it shows up in the game. This character is doing this, so this character shouldn't. That way they feel separate and distinct. Right, we have Mac the Alchemist. Does he have a poison type thing? Great, he can poison you. Stell the Aeronaut, well maybe she shouldn't poison you because then Mac has his own thing. And Stell has her own thing where she does altitude and Mac does not do that. 
I love having the backstory and the history of a character when I go into making their mechanics. It gives me a lot of inspiration to draw from. And I like to pick out objects from their past or events in their history that I can build a story around, build a card around. It really ties the whole game together. If the narrative, if the story appears on a website or in the game or somewhere else, you can read the story and then you hear about, oh, that's one time when she was flying in the clouds and got lost and then, you know, her plane broke down and then I make a card about getting lost in the clouds or, you know, a wrench that she can fix her plane in midair. That ties those two things together and you feel like you're closer to her and more in the experience of her world when you also have the same tools and the same experiences that she had. That brings those two pieces together and it really makes a more complete experience for the player. Today we talked about Stell. She's an aeronaut. She flies vehicles like balloons and airplanes, and she has an altitude mechanic that helps her fly up and down during combat. We also talked about how you make a character's items and what kind of thoughts go into that design process. And we talked about the narrative of a character and designing towards that and bringing all the parts of a game together into a cohesive whole. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time on The Making of the Bazaar.